Uh, Thursday, June 18, 2015, this is North Hampton Senior Services, Council on Aging Board meeting. We have a member of the public uh, here. Would the member that member like to speak to the board? No, I'm okay. just new to town and say hi. Oh. Hi. <laughs> well, you get to observe what we do. Exactly. Very important thing. <laughs> okay, uh, need approval of the minutes from the 14th. Anybody want to make a second? Second, anyone? Second, Teresa. Okay, anyone have any corrections, changes, or problems with the uh, minutes? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Okay, no one opposed. Okay, staff report, Michelle Dillman, social worker. Hi, Michelle Dillman. Um, I have passed out the senior farm package um, survey from last year. Um, it's on both sides. Uh, girl from Northampton, um, we passed it out to everyone, only 22 people, 21 people responded out of 30. But so it was pretty good overall satisfaction of the senior farm share, which is um, going to be starting July 7th again this year. Um, this year for the senior farm share program, we have um, 40 shares, seniors. Um, so just looking back in 2013, we had 22 farm to senior farm shares. Um, last year we had 30 farm shares, so we're up 10 this year. So it's a very popular program. Um, we do it by lottery. So on, it's a 10 week program, July 7th through, starts on July 7th and it will be 10 weeks of fresh um, vegetables right from the farm will be delivered here um, and we have seniors um, volunteers put them into bags uh, recyclable bags that have been donated through um, Health New England and so far for um, I've received 55 applications for seniors who would like to participate in the program this, this year so far um, tomorrow's the deadline and then we will pick um, by lottery names um, by Monday and then we'll notify um, the participants either way um, if they were chosen or not um, by next week. And something new this year with them is they're, if, you, if they receive SNAP benefits, which is the food stamp program, they're able to use that to pay their $10 um, towards, that's their share. It's $100 worth of a farm share, which um, Grow Food Northampton subsidized this to $90 and the participant pays 10. So um, they can use um, their SNAP benefit for that. So that, that's something new, um, which is nice that they can use their SNAP benefit this year. Um, and um, I, look, I can also be writing on $25 um, Salvation Army vouchers um, to the uh, Northampton Farmers Market this year. So um, the people that aren't chosen, I'm going to be contacting the Salvation Army to see if we can write those people that apply on um, the vouchers for the, the um, wow. farmer's market. Oh, so that's, right. so that, that's a plus. Plus we have um, other farmer market coupons that come out through Highland Valley uh, later on in the season. So that's another way, another food program we have um, for vegetables. Um, so, uh, staying on the food, Brown County Program serves um, 144 individuals each month, and um, out of those, we deliver, um, volunteers deliver 53 bags. Um, any leftover bags are donated to the Northampton Survival Center, and um, from January to April this year, um, this, the senior services have donated 770 pounds of food from that program. And that's bags that aren't picked up or delivered or they're, they're just left over for whatever reason. Um, they don't go back to the survival, I mean, they don't go back to the food bank, they go to the survival center and they pick that up. So they send us a letter every month telling us how many, because they do everything by pounds there. Yeah, yeah. So they tell us how many pounds we have donated for the year. So, so far it's 770 in April. Um, Dual assistance is over April 15th ended. Um, I had 83 appointments from November 1st to May 15th of this year. So every year it goes up. 
and then every year, unfortunately, the money that they have to assess goes down. <laughs> so um, that's unfortunately that that's what uh, what happens. And um, and uh, we'll, I'll be writing a grant a grant proposal for Highland Valley, um, and we'll be asking for the most. So it's fifteen thousand. Um, to assist our seniors in need of transportation for grocery shopping. Um, we, we were just talking about it yesterday, so there's no, there's really no other information to have on that, except um, that's one of the grants that, um, that we'll be working on. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, what kind of grant is that? Michelle, with the um, fuel assistance? Yeah. Is it a number of the same people, or do we get new people as well. Each year, we get new people each year. A, lo a lot of them are, um, a majority of our um, return people, but um, a lot of them are new. We had a lot of new clients this year. Um, I, when people come in, I really let them know, you know, this is what you may qualify for. Um, we go through, I go through a list of, um, depending on income, um, different things that they may qualify for. Um, staff benefits, uh, fuel assistance, um, food commodity, you know, whatever other programs that we have, um, senior farm shares. So. There's a numerous pro uh, programs for Medicare that can help pay for Medicare because I also do the Shine counseling. So um, I also have, I don't have the numbers for that, but I do that. My average lately is like eight clients so a week for Shine. So. <laughs> that's getting very busy. Plus we have a Shine counselor volunteer here. And then we also have Deborah Hollingsworth that comes in and she's not a Shine counselor, but she's also been doing benefits counseling and we have our other new benefits counseling happening, which I'm not involved in, but so there's lots of, lots of help happening, so it's good. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much, Michelle. Okay, okay we want to finance services because of what our obligation is um, to the city um, our obligation <clears throat> this fiscal year to the city meaning the city appropriates money in a for a budget for us as one of the city departments but then on top of that there's um, funding that we need to come up with to support our budget so our portion for FY 615 excuse me um, $96,009.33. So that's what our share is to come up with. Um, so what I just did was transferred $46,992 from our formula grant money, which is from the Department of Elder Affairs, um, because the money that we get from <clears throat> the Department of Elder Affairs, we use strictly for salaries. So that's been transferred, and then uh, eventually monies will be transferred from our other revolving accounts to end up a zero balance with personal services. So again, our portion, $96,009.33. And that comes from grants, it comes from fees, it comes from <coughs> excuse me, um, fundraising, donations, rentals. What, Mary? <coughs> mini sale table, anything, <laughs> anything we have um, is, you know, it all supports what we have. The coffee shop, the gift shop, all of it is all part of how we figure out what our budget, how our budget can be um, paid. Um, so that's, that's where we are with the budget. Um, and then FY16, as I said, starts as of G uh, July 1st. So that'll be a, a new year. And, and just as a, you know, background to that we were level each department was level of service so you couldn't you know create anything 
new um, in terms of services that are it's going to you know ramp up your budget. So we do start new programs. We do a lot of new things, but it is that there isn't an impact on the city budget. Hard to believe that July 1st is almost here. So that's the budget. Okay, and that takes care of 16 also. Uh, well, FY16, do you have any just level services? Yeah, so, um, you know, our budget, I didn't have to appear before City Council when they have the uh, budget hearings. Uh, you know, we, <clears throat> meet with the mayor and the finance director, but I wasn't one of the departments that needed to go before the um, city councilors to talk about the budget. Um, a number of departments didn't have to go. It was some of the larger departments. Okay. Shall we move on to the, unless there's any questions on the budget? So, Patty? Move on to the director's report? Yes. Um, Michelle had mentioned about um, Highland Valley Elder Services grant. So that cycle of grants is starting again, and those are in effect as of October 1st through September 30th. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday about what we on staff might want to do for um, grants with Highland Valley, and um, grocery shopping was one of them, um, funding the ability to do grocery shopping for seniors. We used to years ago have the escort shopping program where we had um, volunteers assist seniors to go grocery shopping, but really what that pro and, and some of them really did need assistance, um, but it was really starting to be just a transportation mm -hmm. program. Um, so, you know, there's a real need for people to be able to get to the grocery store. So that, that's one of the focuses and, um, you know, we'll be looking at what kind of grants. Um, Crystal and actually Michelle will both be going to the um, informational session at Highland Valley to learn more about the grants. So I, I think usually we may apply for four to five grants and might end up with two. So that will be conditional on the vans, of course. Um, Acquisition of the vans. Yeah, I mean, the, um, I do have a thing about the vans later on. Okay, um, so just bring that up again about grocery shopping for the yeah. vans. Um, uh, excuse me. <coughs> On May 29th, we had Emmett Schmarzo from the Department of Elder Affairs. He did the formula grant training. Um, and the formula grant is one way that we receive funding um, to support our budget. Uh, what was good to hear was, and though this isn't totally official, um, is that the dollar amount that we receive per senior um, it may be increased to $9. Currently, we get eight dollars per senior and it's based on the number of seniors you have according to the last federal census so um, if in fact that um, it does pass and it's nine dollars per senior um, we would receive an additional five thousand eight hundred and seventy four dollars and again the monies from the department of elder affairs with that formula grant have I've always used them just to pay salaries. Um, so that was good news, and hopefully that's really how it ends up. Um, we held Shred Day here Saturday, June 6th, and it was pretty amazing how many people came, and there was like a waiting line to start with, and people just kept coming and coming. And um, Joanne and I had a wonderful time out there because it wasn't real sunny. <laughs> it was a real nice day. And Valley Green Shredding um, does this at no cost to us. They do it as a volunteer service. <clears throat> and um, we made $946, which may not sound like a lot, but it really, really is when you're looking at $5 a bag or a box. Um, people were very generous, very nice, and 2.25 tons of paper were shredded. Wow. So we did our part for the environment. Um, so we will be having another one September 12th from 9 to 12. Um, we try to do two of them a year. And so that's what's been scheduled September 12th. So Valley Green Shredding <coughs> has just been wonderful um, to do this. And they do it for other um, organizations as well. 
Um, the month of July, the lobby, not the entire lobby, but the lobby will be set up um, as a large, I'm going to say like mini tag sale, sidewalk sale days, tables. Um, and it again is a part of a fundraising. Um, Mary will do her portion with the mini sale table. <clears throat> We've been getting things, um, and not that we're looking for a lot of stuff for tag <laughs> sale items, but people have been giving us things, so that'll be there. Things that we've held on to, items that will come out of the gift shop um, as part of, but we're going to do it for the whole month um, oh, in okay. the lobby because that's where people will see it daily. Um, <clears throat> just the uh, book tables, uh, any, or just leave them there? Um, when we were going to have to um, reduce our space here, we moved the books to uh, three tables from six, but we are thinking of putting six tables back out there because people are saying you don't have as many books and uh, that sort of thing. So, and there's some ideas of how to make that look better. So yes, we probably will um, have multiple tables again. And then the lobby would be set up with probably six tables, similar to what you see here, um, set up for the sale. And then the other furniture would be, you know, moved around so it still looked nice out in the lobby. Um, so that's that's our thought. So you would have the six tables for the books and six for the tax sale. Yeah, that's what we had last year. Yeah, yeah. And um, we have some different groups coming into the building for July and August. Um, Paint Box Theater will be back here for three weeks, and um, those consumers, you know, use the coffee shop, the gift shop, and buy stuff from. The, the table, so it's a good opportunity um, to um, have all of that step out that will benefit, um, you know, any of the funds that we raise help support our um, programs and services and opportunities here. Uh, September 26th, uh, we are going to participate again in UMass Impact Day of Service. Um, this will be the third year that we've done it. I know Patty um, weren't on the board yet. I don't think, and you came um, to that to see uh, the students. Um, so the first year that they were here, I had them doing washing all the chairs in this building. Oh, yeah. um, and you know, they kind of finished, I think they were like 15 or 16 students. Um, last year, Crystal had them um, cleaning as well. This year, we kind of have a different slant on how it's gonna be done. It might be direct service with seniors. <clears throat> and we, you know, we haven't figured out the detail to it. There's some information we need to find out, but for example, two students would go to a senior's home and you know, rake their yard and hang up with flower beds. Yeah, it would be my lottery because I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to participate in it. Do they do windows? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think that there's a list that they come up with what they are able to do. Like they're not going to go clean gutters on the second floor. Right. Um, but yes. there are things that they probably are not allowed to do versus things that mm -hmm. they obviously have the capacity to do. Do you have an estimate of how many there are available? No, we, you never know really until, um, you, know, you might not even know until that day, but they kind of give you an idea a few days ahead of time. You know, last year we said that we could accommodate up to 20, and she said 25. Um, so I think it's based on what we submit as a project and what we say we can accommodate um, for supervision and tasks for them to do. But in the past, they've helped with Habitat for Humanity, like painting fences, um, painting houses, you know, people's sheds, like doing those types of projects. So we were thinking um, by lottery, people could apply with, you know, a project idea of what they have, and then Patty or I would go out to, you know, assess the reality of the projects before. <laughs> we would also need, uh, I would imagine, uh, some supervision. Yes, picture. would you like to volunteer? <laughs> I, I, just, I was making the point. Well, we will, we will need volunteers to yes. help with supervision, absolutely. <laughs> so, and well, maybe transportation. Yeah. We're hoping yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, that's one of the other considerations yeah. to take it away from the senior center yeah. and bring it up into the community to directly assist. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, and, you know, what is really nice is that students do something great for your community mm -hmm. and in, in our case great for our seniors or our senior center and somehow it benefits yeah. what, what our, our mission is so it's good 
Um, we're preparing for upcoming events. Um, June 30th, we're having a birthday celebration, and it's uh, all those 90 and older have been invited. <coughs> if you recall, we've um, every year had what's called Party in the Park, the Beale Look Park, and it was really to honor all of those who were turning 100. Um, last year, we moved that picnic party to here because so few people has come here to other years signed up for it so we brought it down here it worked out very well uh, and so we no longer have what's called party in the park it's going to be two different things one is people who are um, celebrating a birthday this year 90 and up um, we're having a party specific for them this is their birthday celebration and then um, in August, August 12th, we're going to have a cookout here so that all those people who really enjoy just having a cookout, um, that will still happen. So we've broken the event that we looked at, evaluated, and changed to more meet the needs of um, and interests of what we have for our um, program. So that's what's happening. So otherwise, Wood Park is open for anybody just to go on down and enjoy it. So it was also, um, it, uh, I was, yes, it was costing us a considerable amount of money to have it there, but you know, the venue was, it was, it was yeah. nice to be there. Yeah. Um, so. And today, we had something very interesting um, for Father's Day. Uh, men can be shaved. And then there was uh, food served, and thank you, John, for providing um, the expertise in the kitchen, um, hot dogs and um, salad. So there was um, shaves, which was... Uh, how, many, how many people participated? I think there were only seven who signed oh, up for it. Yeah, but there were two or three that came in that had not signed up. Yeah, so that was good. I mean, so, oh, yeah. And, and also, yeah, just sort of on another line about you know, getting shaved, we, have um, Kendra Pizinski, who is a you know a licensed uh, hairdresser, who comes in once a month and will cut hair uh, for both men and women. Um, there is a fee for it, and that fee goes towards um, again promoting our programs and services. So, for the Father's Day thing, is that free? Yes, it yeah, was. It was well. free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So some people came. Um, not to get a shave, but to participate in the social aspect of the food. So. Let's see, on June 4th, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, June 4th, we had um, a vision symposium here with the um, Department of Developmental Services. Um, and it was to focus on um, daily life and recreational pursuits for persons with disabilities and I think there are about 65 participants yeah. Kathy yeah. was here it was her department actually yeah. um, that um, sponsored it as well it was great having it here um, Michelle and I both attended it and there was a lot of adaptive equipment oh, yeah. you, could, you could you could put things on and, and, and um, see what it's like at cataracts etc oh, um, oh, you know oh. for a lot of younger people I mean it was really it was very yeah. Well organized, and it just it offered a lot of um, great information and some wonderful uh, speakers. Plus, I was so glad people were planning to came and bought things here too. <laughs> That's true. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they did. Yeah, the group of people. Yeah, yeah it was great. That sending people all over to to do other things in the building. Um, June 29th, um, which is next Monday, uh, Massachusetts Councils on Aging will be holding a diversity training here for senior center personnel. So we're, we're happy to have that because it allows staff to get in there uh, without having to, you know, travel. Um, a new committee, it's an ad hoc committee, um, and this has been formed through our Disabilities Commission and with Cooley Dickinson Hospital, and it's a committee called Health Care for People with Disabilities. Um, and we had our first meeting Tuesday. It was just really a wonderful uh, group of people together who are working on how to effectively assist persons with disabilities, which of course many seniors, um, based on age, um, can be uh, disabled. 
Um, so it involves police, fire, multiple departments at Cooley Dickinson Hospital, especially the emergency room um, staff, Stavros and dis, uh, the Disability Commission here at, um, mm -hmm. in Northampton, which actually meets here and I'm the ADA coordinator. And Jeff Harness um, from Cooley Dick, who's the Director for Community Health and Government, is the person from Cooley Dick who is um, pretty much um, holding on to, you know, making sure that this actually continues to happen. Um, and our goal is to meet at least three to four times a year. Um, one of the other uh, items I'd like to bring up is, in the past, I've talked to you about getting additional handicapped parking spaces here. Uh, it was a total of eight. I did go to transportation back in October last year, I believe. Um, and so really, we, you know, we don't have any additional handicap parking space. And so what I've been asked to do is to come up with verification that there's a need for it. So what I would like to ask um, the board is to take a vote um, about, because I know many of you talked about it at the meeting and also individually to me, um, that if the board could take a vote to um, support the need um, for additional handicap parking here. Um, and and uh, there are a number of people who approach me pretty often about the need for more handicap parking. So I would like the board, if you are so inclined, to vote in favor of additional handicap parking um, here at the Senior Center. So we'd like to make that motion. I make a motion to approve that. Second. Second. Okay, uh, any comments on it or questions? Where would they be, Patty? Um, they, uh, I can actually pass around the picture. Yeah. They would be, um, if you're walking towards the main entrance, it's the parking on your right hand side before that island. So you can look at that. So it would be And you know, one of the things I'm gonna say is that when we have large programs here, it's, um, I mean, parking is at a, at a loss. I mean, everybody does what they can to find a parking space, but it's very difficult for people with um, uh, disabilities and in need to park closer. And there have been times when we've gone out there to move a person's car to help them. They can go to the front and then um, we move their car. Okay, we have the motion. Uh, I think question. question. It says eight. Now, is that both sides of the island? No, it's just it's on the, this, the side closest side. to okay. the door. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Right. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Question just Most about parking um, for large groups and, and <coughs> sort of, um, Can we advise, think, where other places may be that people can bring in agreement, like with uh, Gazette, or I know for the vision symposium, I've come from the Salvo, but yeah. you know, where is there any places that you have like a verbal? Um, it, it's a, a, a verbal request, so that if um, and it didn't happen for that yeah, particular event, <clears throat> but when um, I'll say five college learning and requirements yeah. here, because that brings in you know could be up to uh, 75, wow. 80, if not 125 right. people. Yeah. Not that everyone has the a car; could be two or three mm -hmm. people in a car. But I uh, will call the World War II Club and Daily Hampshire Gazette um, okay. specifically for that event. Okay. Or Thank if we're know. having okay. um, our craft festival or whatever, where mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a lot more vehicles mm -hmm. uh, to come in. And do, we do have an understanding uh, with the Housing Authority for the last row or last ring close to us on the Walter Salvo. Yeah, if, if you're going around behind Walter Salvo, yeah. there's actually parking spaces specific for visitors oh, okay. and yeah. so people can park in there and one thing I'm going to say is that they have really they meaning the housing authority has really cleaned up that parking lot mm -hmm. there are um, no um, I guess for lack of a better word yeah. junk yeah. and vehicles <laughs> yeah. um, back there I mean it's well cleaned they used up. to be at one time oh yeah. my god so it looks good and um, so there's a lot of parking yeah. there Okay, um, how are you going to present that? Uh, are you going to have a type of uh, letter? Today, oh, yeah, the, uh, for the handicap parking, what I'll do is I'll put a letter together and your chair um, can sign that. You know, he can read it and if it needs to be altered, and 
and then we can sign it on behalf of the board. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yep. I'm sorry. I have one other thing. Mm -hmm. I have one other thing. I thought I wrote it down. I didn't, and I have it not in my head anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But if I think of it by the end of the meeting, I'll just raise my hand. <laughs> Okay, uh, any comments or questions on the records report? Building and grounds report now? We're having mulch delivered, uh, so our volunteer landscaper can uh, get our flower beds all put together nicely. I, I, I don't know if you've noticed out there how lovely Beautiful. the um, plantings are that he has done, and I think he's been, this is his third year doing it, so now you've seen them take hold and, and really blossom. It, it adds a lot to our, our area. Um, in the great room, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we were able to use it because they took everything out of it and washed and burnished and waxed the floor. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's really shiny. It looks good. <laughs> Do that for now. Year, something like that. Um, well, yeah. When I guess uh, I'll give. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know, I don't know. Could be every year. I think. I'm not sure. Okay. So. Central Services do that? Yeah, Central Services, two other individuals came to um, work with Bob to mm -hmm. do that. And that's what they did in the um, battery room. Mm -hmm. um, after they moved everything out, um, they, I mean, you can tell the difference because the floors are so shiny, it looks like they're brand new. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they did that as well. So it's nice, it's nice to see things uh, sort of get yeah. updated. Um, and so, uh, the other thing with the building, but it's down under new business, is room reuse, so I'll cover some additional building things under that. And I already had on the um, agenda under new business the item I thought I was forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> so is that for building and grounds? Yep. Right, any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll move on to old business. Update on the Kick the Tires yeah. campaign. So the Kick the Tires campaign is still lugging around and going. Um, the uh, mayor got approval for us to use our gift account funds, which included the Kick the Tires fundraising money. So through the fundraising, we re at this point, $58,936.80. Um, so that will go towards the new man. I mean, we're still collecting, you know, people want to donate. Um, so we're short a couple thousand, but what, as I've mentioned to you before, by purchasing two vans, because one van's going to be paid through capital improvements, mm -hmm. so we have that van and then the one that we're paying for, that between the two, we're hoping to get a nice um, consolidated discount <coughs> because we're buying two vehicles. So the question is like, when are we gonna get the vehicles? They haven't been ordered, they haven't even been reviewed as to what company, what state bid list. So that'll really start happening in July. And hopefully by the end of September we have vans. I mean, that's kind of the goal, but it all works with, here's, here's the van you want, and then they uh, retrofit it to what you need. And of course we want to have the uh, wheelchair lifts on, on the vans. Um, so just getting back to Bob's question about uh, grocery shopping, the whole intent with getting vans was so that we could bring people back and forth from the senior center. So that's something that is the priority. The um, thought now with doing grocery shopping is that there may be one dedicated day that grocery shopping is done with one of the vans. So, so it's not like, oh, we're trying to fit somebody in. Um, it would be specific for that day, and it's, it's, it is for grocery shopping. Um, and if you recall, we used to do, as I mentioned before, the escort shopping, and we're not looking to do it that way. We're not looking to have somebody assist um, somebody else to shop, but if we find that there is somebody who needs assistance, then we'll try to match up a volunteer with them. So trying to assist with somebody's unmet need. Um, so 
So it's, it'll be exciting having the dance. And I thought when we get the dance that um, the board would be invited, and of course, uh, city officials. But every person who made a contribution to the dance, we would invite them. And um, we could do rides around them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you, you getting a little extra money for a bottle of champagne? No, drink it. Never mind. <laughs> I don't think you can <laughs> not only use uh, the airtops. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, you can see the water in it. You know, yeah. right. but, but I thought doing something um, for everybody who made contributions because people were very generous. And, you know, I, I think that's a, an enormous amount of money to raise. You know, from people giving five dollars, or you know, some people a dollar, and other people twenty thousand. So it was all over, all much appreciated for whatever anybody could donate. So it's gonna be a festive day. Uh, you want to update the benefits counseling program? Um, Crystal will be doing that. Crystal will be doing. That. Okay. Over to Crystal. <laughs> I didn't know I was saying. Um, <laughs> so the benefits counseling um, program, we just submitted billing to, and I don't have the exact amount, so I apologize because um, I didn't break with me, but it was um, our final billing that needs to be submitted by June 30th to MCOA, our funding source, is at 30000 So I submitted a first round of, um, of billing. It's actually for reimbursement. We pay through our funds here at the senior center through our revolving account, and then we get re reimbursed through MCOA for the, fund the funding source for the benefits program. Um, and that was a little over $28,000. It leaves us with about $1,200 um, that we are using for some newspaper advertisements um, to get more volunteers for that program. Um, we're doing the first round of training in July for the volunteers so that they can learn about the benefits counseling programs um, so they can learn how to do SNAP applications, fuel assistance applications and things like that and then we'll do a second round of training in August and then we're going to, the volunteers are going to meet monthly to do ongoing training throughout the first year. Um, they will be deployed to counsel seniors on the different benefit applications in September. We're hoping um, to have it start around the same time that the fuel assistance recertifications will be being sent out to people. Um, the volunteers will be counseling on um, many different benefit topics. I'm going to actually grab you guys um, a brochure so that you can have a copy of the brochure. Um, and we are entering our second, um, the second fiscal year, the FY16. Um, Patty and I have prepared the addendum to the original subcontract um, to be sent to the mayor's office for signatures today um, so that we can go forward with the second year and grant funding. How many volunteers do you need for this? Um, we have 15 currently in the 15 that are in the application interview phase. Um, so out of the 15, we have four that are going forward for the training um, and we're still interviewing the rest of them. Um, it's, it, it takes um, a level of um, interview, interviewing skills on the behalf of the volunteer because they're the ones that are going to be you know, working with seniors to help them complete the applications um, and things like that. And to do the level of training in some of the applications, they also have to have a level of um, a computer um, kind of savvy expertise um, and they have to be able to use email. So. The ball, we, we have an array of volunteers. We have volunteers from as young as 22 years old who are, you know, med school students who see this need, like from an emergency room <coughs> standpoint during their internships, and then to, to seniors in their 70s that are applying to be volunteers who have experience based on being census volunteers and having to have help people fill out the, the census in 2010. And they saw how much of an impact their role as a volunteer for that was, so they've come forward to volunteer for this program. So out of the 15, um, are based just on my experience as volunteer coordinator, I would say if we get between five and eight that do the, the one-year commitment, which is required, then that that's about accurate. 
out of 15 people going through the initial orientation and training, if we can retain between five and eight, that would be a realistic number. So I'll grab you that. Um, so I'm just going to add the two contracts you signed today um, are for advertising. One set of advertising is to recruit volunteers. The other is to get seniors to know what's out there and families to know that we have this benefits counseling program. So the uh, dollar amounts are being paid through this um, grant um, that we receive for um, three years. 30,000 each year. It's such a complicated world. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of benefits, but there's a lot of forms and a lot of hurdles that a lot of uh, many people are just unable to um, deal with. So where else would someone, before this started here, where else would a person get benefits counseling? What else is out there? Where is it? Yeah, they can get benefits counseling, um, like with, uh, let's say here, with our social worker. But a lot of times it's like there's so many different little pieces that one, um, one department or one agency might not have all of the pieces. With this benefits counseling, it is putting all the pieces together. And it's like sort of one-stop shopping. Um, that forms can be filled out all at once. Um, but then the Highland Valley didn't try either of that. Um, um, like they will, yeah. Pieces together. Yeah, they're just bits and pieces, I think. So Crystal is the lead on this project. Um, she is the one who wrote the grant. And as I said, it's a grant for three years, 30000 for each, each of those years. And she's worked very hard at this, especially putting all of the uh, invoices Together to get reimbursed mm -hmm. for the first fiscal year. Who's the grant through again? Massachusetts Council on Aging okay. in East Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. David Stevens. Um, oh, David Stevens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a competitive grant. And so we that's were great. So yeah. it's, Good work. I mean, it's, yeah. 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 Who does the training? Are you doing the training? Who does the training? Yeah. My, um, I'm doing the training, and Deborah Hollingworth is also yeah. doing the training. She's a geriatric resource advisor. Um, we're going to have through the initial training, we'll be touching base on a variety of applications, doing kind of role playing um, based on, you know, I'll give you a situation, a scenario, um, and doing a lot of role playing. And then it's really going to be the ongoing training that you're going to do yeah. monthly that's going to touch upon kind of a more detailed about all these different programs, having people from DTA come in, veteran services, um, right. so that you can get updates from the actual agencies that are administering yeah. the program. So as you're, as you're doing it, you're still getting continuing ed training. Yeah. Because it's not until you start to do it, it's like then you come up with questions. And right. Then, uh, and a part of the um, grant is mentoring. So right oh, now, right. I'm yeah. mentoring the benefits manager. She um, has, the person that was hired um, is doing these grant applications currently, even though there's no volunteers. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with her, so she's doing the applications under my supervision and, and mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, and you would be very surprised um, that, you know, things, they change weekly. Oh, with some of that. This, um, <laughs> and it's, you know, and we, but we're working, you know, with legal services and things like that. So we get, you know, the from an advocacy standpoint, we're getting all of the updates as changes because like a fax, something as simple as the fax number that you send an application to cannot be updated on a state's website, but then it might be updated through an advocacy group where they'll be like, oh, instead of sending the application to this organization, we're now sending them to Taunton because they're doing a central processing unit. And it, you know, it takes a little while sometimes for the websites to be updated from a state perspective. So it's really great to have people, you know, hands on doing this work to help the seniors qualify for the benefits. Because a lot of times it's a very big deterrent for people to finally get over that. They have all this, they don't want to, you know, they, are, they associate SNAP, nutritional assistance, with welfare benefits with yeah. kind of the stigmatism of poverty yeah. and the need and they don't even though 
they're choosing month to month whether or not to buy nutritious food or to buy their medications because there's not enough money to do both. Um, they won't apply for the programs that are available because they don't think that you know they're there for them. Or there's somebody else that needs this program that needs this program more. Um, so we're hoping through the volunteer assistance that because the senior citizens in this room and in our community, you guys are the ones who helped establish these benefits to be there for individuals, and you're the most reluctant to receive the benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you know having helping seniors to realize that it's your hard work and your yeah. tax dollars that have helped establish these programs as they are. They were made by you, and now if you need them, you should be utilizing them mm -hmm. rather than um, you know having them say, oh, we'll save it, let somebody else take it. So we're trying to get rid of that stigmatism that's associated with a lot of these benefits because they are there for you. So. Well, we grew up in a different culture uh, you know, 50, yeah. 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, if you were poor and you received benefits, well, you were poor. Mm -hmm. It's too bad. And it, it's a different attitude now. But, Hard for some of these people to come around to thinking of well, I can get assistance, and it doesn't mean I'm helpless right. or poverty. You know, they're poor from poverty. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult. Very well spoken. Very well. Okay. Anything uh, old business under other old business? No, I don't know. Okay. The rest of them will be my agenda. <laughs> So, uh, another new business, Room Reuse Committee. At the last meeting, um, the committee was put together, uh, and that committee met once thus far, and we did a tour of the different rooms that we were looking at for changing the use of or looking at how they could be utilized more efficiently. Um, so, in July, I will give you a report on what's going to happen in. And we're really only looking at the back room, uh, the pool room, and I should call it the games room, and the fitness center. But I will say that one of the definites is, because we need to move forward on it, is that back room is going to be the new fitness center. And I think I mentioned that somewhat at the last meeting, that that was a thought, because the membership in that is steadily increasing. It's getting very tight in there for people to move around. The back room could accommodate uh, sort of a warm-up area so people aren't out in the front entrance way, um, a place where people could sit and change their shoes and um, you know get ready. There's a restroom back there that people could change their clothing. Um, so the other thought is that there would be additional equipment uh, purchased because otherwise that room is too big for just the equipment that we have. And so I've been talking with Anthony and Sean and just looking at other kinds of information about what's available um, for fitness equipment and what, what is it that we could use here. So again, if there's any program or service that we're providing here, that's the one that's increasing dramatically. Patty, do you have to get anyone's okay to move it from the front to the back? Because that's going to take that room off the slate are the possibilities it is it is off the slate, slate. it is off yeah, the slate. Right. yeah that was the it question that i talked to the mayor about okay. because i didn't want to move forward with an idea if, right okay if, um, if it was it left up in the year previously okay right. but no that's not being looked at as a location um, and i did have somebody yes. come in to look at you know moving the equipment and i haven't gotten a proposal back yet about what the cost would be so, um, so that would be what it is and that would have to be done professionally. Right. It's, yeah, we aren't going to be the ones who are <laughs> who are movers and who have experience of moving this heavy equipment that you know you don't want anything to get. And the insurance policy covers them in case of problems. Yeah, they probably have to work. Yeah, so. yeah it's true. <laughs> so that there's you know other ideas about the room, like okay, then what happens to the fitness center? And so there's ideas, and um, in July I'll give you a 
report about how all the rooms can be used. Because, you know, not having that back room for um, the support groups or programs like bingo or really big group meetings, what do you, where, where's your second large, largest room? What do you do then? Um, so, again, it's just really looking at what we have to be more effective and efficient with our space and still being able to maintain what we want plus being able to add more. When I say more, more programming to utilize um, our space fully. Any uh, questions on that? Okay, we'll move on to World War II Veterans Club Marching. Yeah, well, as you know, across the street is the World War II Club, and um, on Wednesdays they provide a, a lunch for veterans. And I got a call from. Um, the manager over there um, to ask if we could host one of the um, luncheons. And when I say host, it means to provide the space because they um, book something um, at some point and so they can't have the lunch and they don't want to cancel it. And so it's like they're going to come over here and the luncheon is going to be in our building. And I think it's terrific that yeah, we can yeah, yeah. Um, have the veterans here. Um, they'll be using our kitchen somewhat not to do like heavy duty cooking but just to you know do um, warming um, so it'll, it'll be nice it's going to be on the 24th so we'll give them a warm welcome to be in our building so there's a nice reciprocation 24th right. yeah. parking yeah. 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 yeah so it'll be nice <coughs> without the flag without the flag no put out the flag oh um, yeah actually i already put stuff in the um, coffee shop for 4th of July, so we'll get even more flags out. Yeah. Red, white, and blue will be the theme. Right. Right. Yeah. And I will say that over um, at the luncheon, our Timeless Tunes band has performed over there during yeah. the lunch. Oh. So, you know, I think oh. I they go there for lunch every week. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, the next uh, item is, uh, uh, no, any other questions on the lunch? The next item is uh, Highland Valley Yellow Services Board Representative. Catherine Coolidge Service has volunteered to, she volunteered to be, uh, to go back. Uh, we need a, we need a motion to appoint her. So we make a motion to appoint her to the Board of Directors. I appoint her. Okay. <laughs> somebody second. Somebody second. second that one? Second. There we are, Teresa. Okay. Uh, any questions on this? Does she oh. want to go? Go ahead. Oh, yes. yes. We, didn't, we didn't wait for until she left the room. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I checked with Patty and she said he talked to her and she was willing, so I didn't. Otherwise, I would have stopped her before she left the room. Brought her up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to make meetings so you get elected or something. <laughs> okay, uh, motion is to uh, appoint her. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No opposed. She's appointed. And we will notify Island Valley Elder Services that she's been appointed. And then, Bob, you also want to let people know that there's still two other Yeah, there's still two yes. other slots <laughs> open, and we would appreciate any volunteers who would to spend one afternoon a month. No? Okay, well. <laughs> and one other uh, item in new business I had, we, we last meeting we uh, made a motion to send a letter to the mayor indicating that our board members were available for uh, a committee to locate space for the uh, Arts and Recreation Department. Uh, I have a copy of the letter if you'd like to see it or you'd like a copy of it. It's simple. Uh, Walter Bach wrote the basis of it, but a little, little, little tough, so we, we smoothed it down a little bit. But it's uh, basically, I'll just read it quickly. The purpose of the letter is to inform you that the Northampton Council on Aging at their regular main meeting unanimously voted to support the idea of a committee that you would form for the purpose, purpose of locating suitable and adequate space for the Park and Recreation Department. We're aware of your numerous concerns, constraints on time and resources, and we would encourage you to call upon the Council on Aging and Senior Services staff to assist in the pursuit of finding a location. 
Please call us, our services we could be of assistance to you or the Recreation Commission. That's nice. Simple, well, straightforward, yeah. uh, basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know. That's really nice. We're here if he wants us. Uh, yeah. if, if he He's doesn't home. need us, uh, well, we're, we're here. No response? <laughs> well, I haven't heard anything yet, no. But then yet. Uh, it was only sent out uh, on May 19th, so it may take a while to. May 19th. Kind of busy with me. June. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's the one who's in chief of police, so hey, big things are going That was a done deal, thank you. Well, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's uh, I think Patty has one more thing. I just one other thing. Um, I wanted to announce that uh, Pioneer Valley Transit Association uh, Authority, I'm sorry, will be here next Tuesday from 4 to 6 to do a ridership meeting. And every so often they will have a meeting um, in different locations so that people who use the um, PBTA can come and talk, uh, raise concerns, give compliments, whatever. So that's going to be here, and I'm, I'm saying it specifically because um, the uh, hopefully this is on the air next week, and people will know that on Tuesday. So that's going to be here from four to six. Okay, we have one more item. Uh, according to our bylaws, and missed this last time, uh, the main meeting we should have uh, appointed a nominating committee for uh, officers to be elected to the uh, the offices in, in council and the board directors. Uh, since we didn't do that, we, we can take nominations today and postpone the election until the election is supposed to have been this meeting. But we can postpone the election until July if you'd like to. Or, well, we can't contact, contact one of the vice presidents. Can't again. you keep what you got? If they're willing to serve, and uh, you can vote them in. Uh, of course, I don't know about Michael. He probably would be okay. We can't consult with him. We've got our secretary treasurer who's here, however. Would you like to uh, stay in the job, so to speak? I would like to stay on the board. But not the job. I feel ineffective, actually. I think I, you know, as what? I, in doing in doing the job. Your yeah. job is very simple, actually. I uh, know that's maybe what my problem is. We don't, have, we don't have yeah. we don't have any finances, but if we did have money, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Or did have money, well, I'll hang in there for another year for sure. And, and secretary, we only really need you in case of an executive session. And I have done that. When yes. uh, we have to take the staff out of the room. Yeah. Then you can take notes for that. I have done that, and that's so. Okay. That's about it's necessary, but uh, it isn't a very well, thank challenging you. job. Okay. I'll, I will go for it for another year. I can't do a lot of talking <laughs> to my job in Grand Valley either. Well, I wouldn't uh, object to staying in the job. Good. I'm sure Michael would. Would you like to? Uh, do we have enough? So, no, we cannot vote. Kathy, Kathy left the tank, but we don't have a quorum. So, we will do that vote. We will postpone that voting until July, when we do have a quorum. And if there's anyone who wants to uh, get in the running for any of the positions, please let us know. To challenge any of us. We have a runoff. <laughs> Campaign statement, we have a debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One other uh, social comment, Adam, let me know that the uh, trip to Radio City for the Rockettes is a done deal. Okay. Yeah, so one of the trips uh, to the Rockettes oh. will be happening. It's on Friday, the 20th, which is the Friday before Thanksgiving. It's $125. Mm -hmm. We have to get through. Yes. Yes, to towards a distinction. Right. Yeah. Through our friends. Yeah. Um, we have to get at least 12 confirmations of reservations by July 1st. But if you think about that, I know it sounds like, oh my gosh, it's only two weeks. And that, that part's true. But um, anybody who's buying any tickets for any big production, it's, it's always three or four months. Okay. And we have excellent yes. seats. $85 seats in the orchestra yeah. that we're able to get for $65. That's the Christmas show? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Does this include a luncheon yeah. or no? No. We often in Europe. Right. You can bring stuff on the bus and you're going to have, there's going to be hours of free time mm -hmm. before the show at 2 o'clock. Oh, nice. Okay. That's so great. that sign up is at the um, front desk now. 
Okay, and announcements, we've got uh, the next uh, board meeting will be Thursday, July 9th at 1.30. And of course, it's not a meeting in August. So July will be our last one until September. Uh, I'd like to request that everybody stay seated. Joanne, would you, uh, we're gonna attend the meeting to turn off the camera. Uh, need a motion to uh, adjourn? I make a motion. And Teresa will uh, second it. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Nobody wants to stay. <laughs> okay. We have